First of all, get young if you don't have any mashkets in the time. No, when you get up to speak as a guest, I have a dilemma. As I'll say, Peschim Bechvedach Sanya. Hagaris HaKedosh begins with Peschim Bebracha, which is based on Yerushalmi. The Rebbe always says Peschim Bedvar Malchus. How do you reconcile those three? Here it was very easy. Here we're talking about the Sefer Dvar Malchus, about Rabbi Azagwi's phenomenal chibur, putting together Malachit, all the Sichas of the Rebbe and the Rambam, who was Malachim, Herakiralf Yid Beis. So my bracha is that the Ebeshe should help, that his work in spreading Surah HaGeula, Limud Mashiach HaGeula, he should succeed in spreading this to the whole world, and that should bring the Geula Hamitis Vashlema Teka from Yad Mamish. When the Rebbe spoke, Chavches Nisan, I'm going to talk a little bit more about it. One of the things that he said that we need ten Akshanim, ten stubborn people who will be relentless in bringing about the Geula. There's no question in my mind that Rabbi Azagvi is one of those, I hope there's more than 10, but at least he's one of those 10. Someone who has devoted himself to being Malachit. I mean, it was years of work, Chachmah and Malacha, putting together the Sefer. And not just putting it on the shelf, but going around, you just heard Rabbi Chakak, going around to Rabbanim, Rashi Shiv, Gedele Yisrael, and spreading the, the message of Geul Shlema to the whole world. I just want to share something, an insight that I had with Derech Hefsher. And before I speak, I want to say a few words. The year that the Rebbe suffered the stroke in Tavshinun Beis, that sukkis, something very enigmatic occurred. The Rebbe asked where the people benched Lulav and Esrik, and he went into the sukkah, and he stood there, I think, for over six hours, listening to every Yid who was there make the bracha and answering Amen. Mamish, something was unprecedented. What was lying behind that? Of course, we have no way of understanding the Rebbe's minhagim if he didn't explain it himself. But if it helps us in Yerushalayim, if it helps us in strengthening our amunah and the betachin and, and the, the tikva for Mashiach, then I think the Rebbe would accept any explanation. Number one, the Dalit Minim, everyone is familiar with the Medrash, the Dalit Minim shows an Achdos. The Rebbe was trying to tell us that he needs, we need to have the Achdos to bring all Yidin together. But I think there's another message as well in all the Dalit Minim and the Sukkah. If we look at all the Hiras of the Rebbe in Tavshin and Aleph and Beis, primarily, it can be divided into five categories corresponding to the Dalit Minim and the Sukkah. The Lulav, the Medrash says, corresponds to the backbone. That's the symbol of Akshonus, of being stubborn, being relentless, tenacious, not giving up. That was one of the things that the Rebbe said, and when the Rebbe said it, we didn't realize how much we're gonna have to use stubbornness to keep our Amunah strong, and not just our Amunah but also the work that we have to do to bring the Geula. So that's the Lula. The Rebbe also emphasized, together with Limud and Yoni Mashiach and Yoni Geula, that almost every time, opportunity the Rebbe had is to emphasize the importance of Tzedakah and Av, Avas Yisrael and Achtas Yisrael. That's the Esrig. That, the Esrig corresponds to the heart. Then the Rebbe told us we have to open our eyes. That's the Hadassim, that are likened to the eyes. And then there were another whole host of heroes that have to do with the lips. Aravis are like the lips. <coughs> Learning in Yoni Gula Mashiach, of course, that you have to do Bedibur. But the Iker, the crying out Ad Masai, Kabbalah's Hamalchus has to be with Dibur. Learning Pirkeyavis Be'iyu. And all of the heroes that the Rebbe said about learning require the mouth. 
But al kulam, the overarching aspect of the Rebbe's heroes is to learn in Yoni Geulam Mashiach the Inyan of Das. Laman Yedu Derisechem, the Sukkah, is the overarching aspect of how we bring the Geulam Shleim by learning in Yoni Geulam Mashiach. Everyone knows when something catac cataclysmic occurs, something that is out of this world, an earth-shattering event, people remember where they were at that moment. It, it, it just sticks with you in a way that you can't forget anything about it. I think the most earth-shattering event that happened and I, that I can think of in my life was when we heard the Sikha of Kayach Nisan, Chav Ches Nisan, when the Rebbe said, Tut alts was rekent. The Rebbe gave over the shlichus to bring the geula shleima to us, and that's when he said we need ten akshanim, and then he said we need one, two, or three people to be mitakis eitzah to find some way of bringing the geula. And it was an earth-shattering event. It, it shocked us. We were we were jolted beyond belief. It was something that we never heard before, we never expected to hear, and we were to tumult. We were just in turmoil. We didn't know what does the Rebbe want. The Rebbe didn't tell us what he wants. He says, we should figure it out. What should, if the Rebbe can't do it, we can do it. The Rebbe can't figure it out. We could figure it out. It was very disturbing. And people came back to the Rebbe and said, no, Rebbe, we're giving it back to you. You do it. We can't do it. And the Rebbe knows, and it pointed, that it's your responsibility and your responsibility and your responsibility. The Rebbe gave it right back to us. So we thought, what is the Hira that the Rebbe wants us to do that we didn't do? Learn Taira? We're learning Taira. Learn more Taira? Of course. The Rebbe always says, Meisif HaHelech, Maylin Bekeidish. Of course we have to learn more. Do more mitzvahs, more mitzvahim, more of everything, of course. But what does the Rebbe want from us? What do we do now differently? So we expected to hear the Rebbe, the next Fabreng in Parsha Shemini, a few days later. The whole Sicha goes through. At the end of the Sicha, the Rebbe says, we have to be Meisif in Taira mitzvahs, and Afatsas HaMayanas. When did the Rebbe not say that? What was finally, Shabbos later, a week later, Parshish Tazriya Metzera, the Rebbe said that the, we had, the Rebbe gave a whole beer about learning the Derech HaYishara is to bring the Geula is by learning in Yoni Mashiach and in Yoni Geula. So the Rebbe told us specifically what we should do, the Derech HaYishara. And the Rebbe gave a whole husband, we'll go into it a little, little, little later. Why couldn't the Rebbe have told us that right away? Why did he have to make a sotzi tumult? And we didn't understand what the Rebbe meant. And the Rebbe, in fact, right after the Sicha, the Rebbe told the Chassid, Le'noga v'le'paga, le'paga v'le'noga, whichever order he said it, it didn't have any effect. We, did, we missed the point. We didn't understand what the Rebbe wanted. Why did he wait so long for, to explain it? And what was the Rebbe trying to do? To demoralize us, chas v'shalom, to make us feel that that uh, he gave up and he's giving over to us nobodies and we should bring the girl there's a bracha that a father makes when his child reaches bar mitzvah it's a very puzzling bracha a father reaches the milestone that his child has now reached the age of bar mitzvah and he's saying baruch hashem i got rid of my responsibility with you where do we hear of such a thing? Do we do it after any other mitzvah? We finish Pesach. Pesach is a very hard yontif. There are a lot of ancient that are shayach to the person on Pesach if he doesn't do things right. You ever hear someone say after Pesach is over, Baruch Petrani I'm free of all this liability. Pesach was such a liability. Chas v'shalom. To be happy that you got rid of a responsibility doesn't make any sense. Especially when you're raising a child. The child is a, a piece of Mashiach. He, he, a child is Mashiach. You raised, you have this chus to raise a Mashiach, and you say, I'm so happy I finally got rid of this responsibility. On the surface, it, it makes no sense. And then there's another question, a klotz kasha. A child is called Mashiach. We finally reach bar mitzvah, and we're able to do a mitzvah, ke mitzvah We're doing a mitzvah, the way we're supposed to do the mitzvah with shleimus and everything, we're no longer Mashiach. We're going downhill. Does that make any sense? As a child, we're in the highest level. As soon as we become an adult, we go down. So the answer, I think, is very simple. Baruch Shepetrani is not a bracha 
to say that we're thank God that we no longer have to deal with this this kid over here. On the contrary, if the bracha is saying Baruch Hashem that my child is now independent. The child doesn't depend on me training him every day. The child has the das, the ability to appreciate the value of Torah and mitzvahs and to do things on his own. There's a mimer of Tavshin Chavches, based on the mimer of the Rebbe Rashab and the Friedrich Rebbe's Sheva Brachas of his Bar Mitzvah. The last day, the seven days after his Bar Mitzvah, there was a mimer of Chazakta V'Hayisu Laish. And the Rebbe asked, the Rebbe Rashab asked the question, and the Rebbe asked the question, when you're bar mitzvah, you become an ish. So why do you have to be hayisa ish? Chazakta, you have to be strong to become an ish. You are automatically the day of your bar mitzvah. And the answer the Rebbe gives is that until your bar mitzvah, you're dependent on your father for everything. You get all the keiches mulmaila. But what is bar mitzvah? Bar mitzvah means v'hayisa v'chazakta v'hayisa ish that you use your own keiches that you're now independent, that you have the keiches to be an ish with your own initiative. You're not dependent on something coming from the outside. It could be, it's interesting, there's a Rashi in Yavamas that says the Mokar, where do we know that marrying a woman has to be medaita, has to be with her consent? Where does it say in the Torah? So Rashi, and it's interesting, this, this is not a, a, a Mokar that says in the Gemara, it's Rashi's Mokar. Because it says in the Torah, "V'yotza v'hoisa li'ish, v'hoisa midaita mashma." When you use the word "v'hoisa," it means midaita. It has to be with her knowledge, with her consent. Same thing over here, "v'chazakta v'hayisa li'ish," that this has to be with your das. It's not enough that you're doing it with someone else's das. It has to be your das, and that's really what happens at bar, at bar mitzvah. You, you don't lose your kayach of mashiach. mashiach. Every yid has an itzus of mashiach in him or her. Every Yid has Mashiach. But when you reach Bar Mitzvah, you can't rely on the Mashiach that the Abish to put inside of you. You have to do it al das atzma. You have to do it with your own kefas, with your own initiative. And this explains why the Rebbe didn't want to tell us what he wants us to do. But or you could ask a question before I go into what the Rebbe's intention, I think, was. Why do we do it in such a negative way? Baruch Shepatrani, Manish Lozet. We should say, Baruch that you gave me a child that is now able to stand on his own two feet. Why do we do it blush and shlila in a negative way? So the same question is asked about Shalei Asani Goy. Why do we say Shalei Asani Goy? Why not Shalei Asani Yehudi? Shalei Yisrael? So the Paskim, I think it's the Taz, says that because when a Yid wakes up in the morning, he didn't justify that he was made into a Yid. What did he do? He didn't do anything yet. So at least, Shalei Asani Goy. Same thing over here. When he reaches Bar Mitzvah, he's standing on Das on his own, with his own intelligence, his own initiative, his own independence, but he didn't accomplish anything yet. So we'd say it in a negative way. And I think that's what the Rebbe was trying to tell us. Chas Misholem, the Rebbe was saying, I gave up. Now only you can do it. I can't do it. The Rebbe still gives us the keiches. But what the Rebbe was saying is that now you've reached the age of maturity. You're now bar mitzvah. You've reached another level. You can do it. You have the power to do it. Uh, certainly with the keiches of the Rebbe. The whole sicha, if you read the whole most of us only read the last part of the sicha, but the beginning of the sicha, the Rebbe talks about keiach nisim. What's the significance of keiach, chav ches? The Rebbe says over there, chav zayin, zach, is three to the third power. Three times three times three is 27. Three is a chazaka. So you have a chazaka by a chazaka times a chazaka. And then, Chav Ches is Kayach. So the question is, if you already have a Chazaka, and a Chazaka to the third power, what do you need Chav Ches for? What does Chav Ches add? So it could be that the Rebbe is trying to tell us that whatever you have, Mumayla from above, is, is very powerful, but now you have to have the Kayach to do things on your own. And that's what the Rebbe was trying to reveal in us, this Kayach in ourselves. That's why he didn't tell us what he wants us to do. If he told us, we would say, okay, another hero of the Rebbe. Until now, the Rebbe gave us ten mitzayim. He told us to do this, to learn Rambam. Every, so the Rebbe is giving us, and we're, we're accustomed to the hearing the Rebbe giving us new heroes, hundreds of heroes from the Rebbe over the years. But here the Rebbe was saying, it's not another hero. This is not just one more hero on top of all the others. This is now, something that you have reached the point where you are now independent, you are now bari mitzvah.
And that explains also, the Rebbe said, you say Ad Masai, you cry out Ad Masai, but you do it because you're told to do it. What's so terrible about that? You know, there was a story with the Rokhachofer when he was in Leningrad during the war, World War I, and the Friedrich Rebbe was there, so some Hasidim were upset at the Rokhachofer because they thought he was taking away some of the uh, stature of the, of the Rebbe. He was competing with the Rebbe, as it were. They, they were taking up for the Rebbe's covet, so they said something disrespectfully about the Rokhachofer. And the Friedrich Rebbe told them they have to ask Michila. One Hasid didn't. And the other one did. And the Rabbi Shabbat said, he's doing it because the Rebbe told him to do it. <laughs> it's not because he wanted to do it. Isn't that a bigger mile of his kashras? And he says, I'm going to do what the Rebbe wants, not because I know it, I understand it. I, the, the Rebbe wants me to do it, I'll do it. The famous Mashbir, Reuven Dunin, was once by the Rebbe. And the Rebbe said, I want you to do something. And the Rebbe started to explain why he wants him to do it. And he says, Rebbe, don't tell me why you want me to do it. I'll do it because you said I should do it. So isn't that a higher level of his kashras? You're not doing it, I'm saying God must, not because I really care about Geula, about ter how terrible Golis is. The Rebbe wants me to do it. That Shaila, that question, why do you have to do it because you want, you want it, is the question of the Chacham of Manishtana. What is the Chacham of Manishtana's question? Why do you have to have Eides and Mishpatim, mitzvahs that make sense? Everything should be chukim. Everything should be done because the Ebesha said so. And what's the answer? The answer is, the same Ebesha that says to do a chayk says, I want you to do a mitzvah because you understand it, because it resonates within you, because it's something that has become part of you. The Rebbe wants us to understand how terrible Golos is. So if we do it because the Rebbe said so, we're missing the point. The Rebbe says, I want you to feel Golos and want Geula. And if you don't, if you're just crying out Ad Masai and you have no feeling for it, then you're, you're coming to Geula with a Golos mentality. You don't feel, you don't have any, I don't feel ter terrible about Golos. Baruch Hashem, I make a good living, I'm healthy, I have a nice family, and I have everything wonderfully. Some, I heard someone in Toronto years ago I don't know the name, so I'm not, I couldn't say it even if I, if I knew it, I wouldn't say it. But he said, I don't really need Mashiach, because I have a good family, I have health, I make a good parnosa, I'm learning Torah, everything is so beautiful. So why do I want Mashiach? Not for me, it's for everyone else. They need it, so I'll ask the Amish for Mashiach. You can imagine how, how deeply emotional he was about this desire for Mashiach. It's like the beggar who wins the lottery, and they ask him, what are you going to do with the $10 million that you won? He says, I'm going to put elevators in all the high-rise buildings, and when I go begging, I don't have to climb the stairs, I can use the elevator. If you, if you talk, say Ad Masai, because the Rebbe said so, and not because you feel it, you're, you're, you're part of, as the Rebbe himself said, you're in a Golos Pinimi, you're still in Golos. So you're trying to, to take, bring Geula with a Golos approach doesn't work that way. So the Rebbe waited, and when did he tell us what he wants us to do? So Chassidim say that before that Shabbos, Tazriya Metzayra, Bachrim composed a mafteach, an index, of the Sichas of the Rebbe that talk about Mashiach and Geula. And that, what the Rebbe said, was in response to that. Ah, now you got it. You finally figured it out. That what you have to do, the Darach HaYeshara, is Limud Yani Gehula Mashiach. Why do we have to learn Yani Gehula Mashiach? Actually, in some places the Rebbe says Mashiach and then Gehula. Some places it says just Geula, some places it says Mashiach and Geula, and some places it says both. So that's a sugya that, you know, you can leave it for you to figure out why he changes the order sometimes. In some sikhas it seems that the focus is on Mashiach and then Geula, and then that's why he writes Mashiach first, then Geula. In some sikhas the Ikrit focuses on Geula, then Mashiach. But it's very important to know, if you li listen to a lot of people who talk about Geula, Mashiach is just like a secondary thing. Okay, we need a Mashiach to bring the Geula, but the Iker is Geula. 
By the Rebbe, Mashiach is the Iker, in one sense. In another sense, of course, Geula is the objective of Mashiach. But Mashiach is not a means to an end. Mashiach is an end in and of itself. But that's a separate sugya. So why do we have to learn Yana Geula Mashiach? So in the Sefer, Dvar Malchus, in the Mevoi, composed by Rabbi Azagwi, he brings a few different explanations. And I'll go through them very quickly, because the Rebbe in, in Sichus of Nun Aleph gives two different biurim, besides the, these that are collected from different Sichus, some before Nun Aleph and Nun Beis, and some during Nun Aleph and Nun Beis. One of them is, one of the things that we have to have is, we have to hope for Mashiach. We have to be mechakel Mashiach. Kol Mishayna Mechakeh, the Rambam says, is a kefer. You have to want Mashiach. One of the things that we're asked when we leave this world, in the past, when people left this world, no longer, no more, the Rebbe would, would tell us to say, the first, this, one of the first things they would ask, it's Tzifisili Yeshua. So how do you have Tzifisili Yeshua? I, okay, I want Mashiach. Do you know what Mashiach is? How could you want something if you don't know what it is? If you just know what it is generally, that's not enough. You have to know in detail what you're asking for, what you want. And if you knew how much Geula will do for us, you would, of course, want it. So it's connected to the Inyad of Tzipis and Yeshua. The second beer is that it's Hilchus and Mashiach. We have to know how we're going to behave when Mashiach comes. You have to know what's going on, what's happening. So in the olden days, in the good days of the Gemara, they would say, Hilchus and Mashiach, it's not Negea today. Because in those days, they, they knew that it was going to take a long time for Mashiach to come. The likelihood was much less. Now it's, we're, we're standing on the Safa Geula. We're right on the threshold. So we have to know how we're going to behave. A third beer, Kol HaEsek, Peres Eilok, Eli Hikrevailu. When you're learning the laws of a sacrifice, it's as if you brought the sacrifice. So the same thing over here, Kol HaEsek, Peres Eilok, Eli Nikol. It's like you are experiencing Geula because you're learning the Tera of Geula. And then a fourth beer, that learning Teira affects the world. Teira is the blueprint of the world. So when you're learning on Yani Gula Mashiach, in Teira, you create a reality, a Metzius of Gula in the world. But in the Sichas of Tazriya Metzera, in the Parshish Bolok, the Rebbe gave two different biurim, why learning in Yani Mashiach of Gula. In, t- in Tazriya Metzera, the Rebbe spoke about the idea that a Metzera, that Mashiach is called Metzera. So it means there's a connection between Tzeras and Geula. What's the connection? So briefly, the Rebbe explains that what is Tzeras? Tzeras is not a negative thing. Negative. It's not ne- just negative. Tzeras actually means that you have this elicitation of eris el of supernal, sublime light, of, of godliness. But it doesn't have the kalim, it doesn't have the vessels, so it can be revealed. And as a result, negative things come from it. How do you purify the mitzayra? Tarasa mitzayra is through a process that helps you reveal the eris el You're not negating tzaras, you're revealing it. You're revealing its true essence. And how do you reveal the essence of Tzeras? Tzeras, the Rebbe explains, the Eiris come from the world of Tayhu, the world of chaos. In the world of chaos, you have Eiris Merubim. You have abundant light, but you don't have the right vessels. So you have to bring the Eiris, the Tayhu, and Kalim the Tikkun. Which, by the way, in Chav Ches Nisan, the Rebbe said, that's the message, that's the mission, to do, to bring Geula, Eres the Tayu, V'Kelem the Tikkun. But now we, we have a little bit of an understanding what the Rebbe meant by that. The Rebbe is saying that just like a Metzera, you're taking the Eres of Tayu and you're bringing it into the vessels that can be contained and therefore revealed. The same thing with Golos. How do you get rid of Golos? Not by negating Golos. Put the olive in Gaula, it becomes Gaula. What are you doing? You're revealing that Golos is really Eiris al Yainim. Golos is really the most sublime energy. But why does it come out so negatively? Because we don't have the Kalim, it can't be revealed. That energy is concealed in Golos, but the Eiris of Golos is higher than even of the Eiris in the times of the base of Migdash. So, how do you bring down the Eiris 
down into Kalin, you're dealing with two opposite movements. There's Ratzai, Bishayim, there's advance and retreat. You're going in one direction, then you have to go in the other direction. Not of an Abiyah was going to Ratzai and advancing themselves to the point where they had Klaes and Nefesh, where their souls expired. And then you have to bring it down into Kalim, into vessels. So how do you do that? How do you combine two opposites? So the Rebbe explains, based on Lukut Teira, that it's through Teira, by learning Teira. Because Teira is called Teferis, Nigumara. What is Teferis? Teferis is the power of synthesis, of harmonizing. You can take two opposites, because Teira is higher. Teferis is higher than Chesed and Gevura. And therefore, you can take Chesed and Gevura that are two opposites and fuse them together. That is the power of Teira. And therefore, by learning Teira, you're able to bring Golos to Geula because he revealed the true essence of, of Golos. At this point, one would have concluded, so then let's just learn Teira. And haven't we been learning Teira for 2,000 years since the Golos began? And then the Rebbe says another thing, that the fact that, we're, that we have Messiris Nefesh in Golos and we reveal the Yechida of our Neshama, that helps us bring about the fusion of, of Teiru and Tikkun, bring the two together. So we have Messiris Nefesh, and we're not short of Messiris Nefesh in, in our history. And we have Teiru, so what's missing? So apparently the Rebbe makes a transition in the Sicha, and then the Rebbe seems to suggest that apparently it's not enough. So what's missing now, that the synthesis that has to happen through Torah has to happen through Torah that deals directly with, with Geul, Mashiach and Geula. So when we learn Torah, specifically the Torah of Mashiach and Geula, that's what creates the synthesis that brings the Eiris al the supernal, sublime light, into the Kalim, into the vessels that are fully revealed. That's the, the mystical, the Hasidic interpretation of Limer and Yanni Mashiach Gaula. In Parshas Balak, the Rebbe noticed that in spite of all the miracles, it was the year of Arenu Niflois, I will show them wonders. In spite of all the miracles, in spite of everything that was happening, in spite of all the things that we were doing, we still could not get rid of this goalless mentality. And the Rebbe explained that it's, even though it's not Arenu Niflois, it's Niflois Arenu, Tavshin Nun Aleph, Tinose, it first is the Niflois and then Arenu. That we see Niflois, but the Arenu is not happening. We're not seeing how Hashem is showing us these Niflois. It's Kumtan Shver, it's coming with difficulty. So the Rebbe said that's why by learning Geulu Mashiach. Why? Because Teira is a Balabas Avel, famous saying based on the Yerushalmi. The Teira has mastery over creation. Torah can change nature, as it brought in halacha. Torah controls nature. So when you learn Torah in general, and specifically when you learn about Golos, Mashiach, and Geula, it changes your own nature, your own mindset. And what does that do to you? That you live with a Mashiach mindset, and therefore you live with Mashiach. The Rebbe is not just talking about learning for the sake of learning, Sake, learning for the sake of changing your whole mindset. And when you change your mindset, it affects the way you live, that we start living with Mashiach. You know, we just read yesterday by Yaga Mayav. Why? Because of Sichan and Eig were defeated. What's Sichan and Eig? Sichan is Melech Cheshben. Cheshben is Machshava. Sichan is the Klippa that doesn't let you get into Eretz Yisrael because you have a your thoughts are, are, are not consistent with Teira. You have a Golos mentality. You have a Golos mentality. You can't get into Eretz Yisrael. Aig, it says he fought us in a place called Edrei. Edrei is Aramaic for arm, for action. You don't give enough tzedakah. You're not translating your ideas in Maise Bepeil. So there's a, there are two obstacles. And corresponding to those two obstacles, the Rebbe told us, learn in Yonim Mashiach Ugaula. That takes care of cheshben, of sichen, and then give tzedakah. Every opportunity the Rebbe said, and said he should connect it to every every hakel, every gathering, that it should be connected to tzedakah, because you have to get rid of sichen. If you get rid of sichen, you'll get rid of aig, it's not enough. You have to get rid of sichen and aig. Those are the last 
the last obstacles. I want to conclude, before I conclude, uh, Rabbi Jacks, oh, he left already? Oh, there he is. Uh, he said, so, he quoted Rabbi Shlem Chaim that the one thing that AI can't do is to daven for you. And Mashiach is, it'll be, when we won't have any other needs, that'll be the one need that our Avedah to the Abishta will be our one need. It's a Mishnah in Baba Kama, the first Mishnah in Baba Kama. Arba Abbas Nazikin, everyone, every Bachar knows this. Hashar, Habar, what's the third one? Hamave. What's Mave? The Gemara is puzzled. The Gemara asks, Gimel Amid Beis, what's Mave? So one day it says, Mave is there, Shane. But the other day it says, Mave ze Adam. Mave means a person. Where in the world do you see that a person is called Mave? Adam, Ish, Gever, Mave all of a sudden. Where does that come from? So the Gemara comes up with a really radical answer. It's a pasuk in Yeshaya, Alma Shaver Asa Baker, Im Tivayun Bayu. If you're going to request the Geula, you will request it and Hashem will give it to you. So where do we find the word Mava used for Adam in the context of davening? Of davening for Mashiach, of davening for Geula. So what is the mission trying to tell us? They're trying to tell us that, you know what? Every other aspect of a person, a machine can do for us. But the one thing that will always remember the Adam is the part of Adam that's connected to Davin to the Abishta. So that's a motor for Shem Chaim's. My, my true conclusion is that the Abishta should bench you, Tzayischem L'Sholem, and that you should continue your work and you shouldn't have to do it for much longer because you will succeed in taking the Changed mindsets of all of us and bringing up the Gula Hamitis Vashlema, take it from Yad Mamish. Amen.